longest. Yeah, I'm not I'm not a fan of splat, so I don't use them. I do I like think. Arctic Fox for the different um, colors that they have. Good day, oh. people from all over the world. Um, a little background for over four years, I would host a weekly. I called it the rice and spice, the international slow food dinner. We'd get together, we'd cook together, we'd eat together, and the best part, we'd clean together. <laughs> and so, that freaked me out a little bit. <laughs> he made um, me co-host, and he doesn't want me to be the, the producer. <laughs> um. Every week I would find a different person with a different food to be the chef and they would get together, you know, recipes and ingredients and we would cook with them. And so that's what we're doing now online. I did this for my birthday uh, and so many people enjoy doing it that we now have nine weeks lined up of all kinds of different food and all kinds of different countries. So tonight I have the joy, a little background, probably within the first couple of months of me doing Rice and Spice, a lady who was going to my university, o Olesia from Ukraine, she came and cooked Ukrainian borscht and like three other dishes that I don't remember. I had never had fresh beets before. Always the, the, the crap in the can. And I loved it. A couple months ago, this was years ago, <clears throat> at least six years ago. A couple months ago, she messaged me and she said, a young lady is coming from Ukraine. I don't know her, but she doesn't have any friends in town and I want you to show around town. And I said, okay. And I invited Diana to come, me being me, to help cook at one of my volunteer cooking. And we ended up cooking on Christmas day, the annual Christmas dinner for the everybody, food for 364 people meal. And that's how I got the meat Diana. And now um, she said she's not a cook. But that's like saying Americans don't cook. But the interesting thing to me is people who from other countries say they don't cook. That means they cook like all their food. But they're not like a fancy cook. Diana, don't you think you cook every day yeah i do cook something but but nothing special you know see americans just go eat out americans don't cook and so when someone says they don't cook like a new says that he doesn't cook but i know he probably makes food like almost every day he doesn't want to be on the cooking show because i don't cook I have the luck of having a mother who was a horrible, horrible, horrible cook. So I learned to cook. And now she's okay. I like her food, but I think usually people thank their mom for teaching them to cook. My mom taught me to cook to survive. Yeah. All right, enough about me. Diana, would you like to say and introduce yourself in any way that's not as fancy as these meaningless rambling words I'm saying? Yeah, thank you for introducing me. Uh, so, uh, yes, my name is Diana and I'm from Ukraine. Actually, I'm a journalist, but now I'm studying political science here because I'm a political reporter. Uh, and thank you for join, joining us tonight. Uh, there are so many of you I didn't expect, and now I'm even a little bit worried, but I hope you will like 
this recipe and if you have any questions so please free to interrupt me because some things could be obvious for me but not for you yeah if you have questions just ask them or put them in the chat and we will answer them as we're going along so and the main question a lot of people had in the event asking beforehand was about the cheese yeah. And the same questions I was asking you last week, because you said it's really hard to find the kind of cheese that you're used to using in Ukraine. So to cook this dish, uh, we use cottage cheese, but Ukrainian cottage cheese is uh, more dense. And here, the one I found is more liquid. So it doesn't suit very well, but still I try to cook it. and. It's more or less okay. The only thing is that you need to add more flour so you could fry it, fry it together. Yeah, so I mean, I was asking and I really think what she calls cottage cheese is just homemade cheese. Like what we, we in the US would call um, farmstead cheese or if you go, you probably went to a Mexican store, they have queso fresco or queso blanco. I saw that, but I didn't. But, instead of it being pressed so dense, it's like more soft, right? I mean, that's what yeah. we kind of tried to figure out. So like I grew up, um, no, the question was dense mean more fat. No, it's just been compressed longer. So less mo more moisture has been frozen out of it. So when I was growing up, we made fresh cheese regularly and I actually am getting ready to write a blog post on how to make fresh cheese. And literally all it is, is you bring milk to 190 degrees and you add lemon or an acid, lemon vinegar, and it yes. curds, and then you have a fresh cheese. Farmstead cheese. So I'm gonna try it. I've got some, I got the ricotta, but then I also have um some queso yes, blanco okay. you know yeah and yeah, but I don't and then um yeah paneer from india is fresh cheese and then what was the one from bulgaria um i just forgot it's it's a very salty cheese usually in a container with water but it's all just um fresh cheese and the secret is is that fresh cheese you can fry it because it doesn't melt. So, all right. Can you send a picture it. here in the chat? I can't find. I will read the questions from the chat, me or Jen will. No, I wanted to send a picture of my cottage cheese, but I don't see oh, okay. it's possible. Let me there. find it. Yeah, you sent it to me in the in chat. Yeah, but from the phone I can't. Yeah, I will send it. I will show it to people here. So, so we start I cooking? mean, to me, it just looks like crumbled up. Okay, let me share screen here in a second. So to me, it just looks like crumbled up. See, um, queso fresco or what? we grew, grew up making which was farmstead cheese that's just like literally just fresh cheese and then you cool it down and um you eat it so is that good yes thank you all right so we're kind of stretching this out because you'll see how simple and quick this is. And so feel free to ask a lot of questions because um, so Diana, yeah, so I'm basic with... ricotta cheese. And my mistake last week is I made it, I kept trying to make it drier and drier by adding more and more flour. So. Go for it, Diana. 
So I have here recorded cheese. I will use this one. Uh, all you need is cheese, of course, a little bit flour, uh, an egg or two, uh, and some sugar. Uh, actually, I don't add sugar because I don't like sweet, but usually, so it's a dessert. So most people do add sugar, just up to your taste. Depends what do you like, you know. Uh, you just need to mix everything together. Uh, have here cheese and egg. So you'll make the one with the ricotta, and I'm going to try to make one with the queso fresco. Oh, cool. Say, the cheese looks great. Yeah, so, see, like, yeah, this is, you know, from Mexican style fresh white cheese. I have a question. How big was the ricotta container that you use? Uh, almost half a kilogram. Okay, and it was, um, you used the entire one, entire container? Yes, yes. Okay, 15 ounces. I did. Yes. Uh, and I would add two spoons of flour. You could add any flour you like. Yeah, so I'm gluten-free. So last week I used coconut flour. This week I'm going to try an almond flour. So see, I, that, that doesn't that look like... Yeah, it's great. I think you yeah. even don't need to add any flour there. So flour is just to make it. I'm going to start warming up the pan. So you, did about, you did that one container, which is 15 ounce ricotta, and you did egg. egg and then and some flour. And two spoons of flour. Okay, thank you. Yeah. Monsi, are you making this now or writing it down for later? I'm doing it right now. Oh, cool. what, kind of, what kind of cheese are you using, Monsi? I'm doing ricotta. Okay, because I'm going to do it afterwards, but with cottage cheese and some paneer. So, guys, if you are going to cook it with homemade cheese, uh, like or a show test, you could add a banana instead of flour, so it would be even more healthy. Or you could just uh, mix. I got a banana. Uh, so we'll try it with banana this time. And I have a question, please. Yes. You were talking about sugar to your taste. Are we yes. talking about like a tablespoon or maybe half a cup or? Yes. It, I that's know. a big bowl. Yes. Uh, I would add two or three, I think, if you like uh, sweet. I love sweet. So two or three. Tablespoons? Yes, yes, tablespoons. Of okay. Uh, Diana, quick question. How much flour do you say? Uh, okay, I would I would start with two spoons. Uh, the goal is you need to form something. Uh, you need to mix this, uh, all, all this cheese so you could form a ball. I will show you later in your hand. So it, if it is too liquid, you okay. won't form this ball. You won't uh, fry it, right? Gotcha. I understand. Yeah, thanks. Two or three spoons, I would say. No, actually, it is like a real uh, cheesecake that you know here, but it looks different. It looks like small balls. That, that's it. And also, you fry it uh, on the pan, not in the oven. So, guys. Uh, who are cooking with us? How are you doing? <laughs> and they're busy. So, yeah, last week, last time I made this, I didn't put any sugar in it. Um. So, Diana, uh, just a question. So, uh, yeah. just to recap, I'm starting right now. So you said cheese, uh, two tablespoon of uh, flour, and two tablespoon of sugar, uh, and yeah. just mix it. And an egg. An egg, uh, two eggs. Yeah, so if you are cooking uh, with ricotta, I would add only one egg because it would be too liquid. But if you are cooking with uh, a homemade cheese or your Indian cheese, I would add two eggs. Okay. It would be tasty.
I mean, basically, we're making like a thick little cheese pancake. Yes. So also, there is an, another one secret. Uh, again, uh, if, you, if you cook with homemade cheese, uh, you could um, mix it in a mixer. So it would be more smoother, you know? Because ricotta is smooth enough. It is already good and tasty. But homemade cheese could be a little bit, I don't know, tough or what? <clears throat> Diana, I have a question for you. Yes. So, um, cause, cause you're from Europe, like Ukraine is more in Europe over there. And so I was born in Germany. So when I came over here, I found that everything was so sweet. And I was like, yeah, exactly. Is it, I can't survive was, here. <laughs> I was like, why are they putting sugar in everything? So I just wanted to know if you had the same experience, like that everything is so sweet. Really the same. I can't get it. It's impossible to buy something here without <laughs> any sugar. I don't know right? how people survive. Right. Right. Even with bread. I was like, why is there sugar in bread? Exactly. Even oh. I don't know the answer to why there's sugar in bread. <laughs> But yes, you I do. Agree, you know, it, I, I got it the sells same better. <laughs> it's just because it sells better. Also, sugar acts it keeps that fluffy, artificial um, Wonder Bread texture longer. Ah, okay. But the bread that ne never go ba goes bad. That's very suspicious to me. You know, I'm from Europe too. Oh, oh, oh baguette, yes. uh, uh, you don't finish baguette on the day you bought it. You have to throw it away. If you don't throw it away, it's going to go bad anyway. But here, bread is always <laughs> fresh, even well, one month old or so. There, there's yeah, two different the types of bread, American sandwich bread and real bread. <laughs> yeah, no, I, I know. I live here long enough, so I just if you get a if you get a a loaf of white American bread and squish it down at the end, it is the size of like a golf ball. <laughs> That's how much air is in it. I did that yeah. once, and I was just like, wow. I mean, it took me about an hour to squish it down, but I wouldn't uh, call it bread, but that's what they call it. <laughs> So I think we need another discussion about weird American food. Yes. <laughs> it, it, it could take an hour. Yes. You know what my favorite thing is, though, about long-term visitors? They come to study in America for a year or two years or three years, and they make fun of our horrible food and all the weird things we eat. And then when they move back home, the first note you get is, when you visit, could you bring me? And this long <laughs> list and butter. of weird American food that they've become addicted to. Peanut, peanut butter, butter being can one of them. Visit. Can you bring peanut butter? Peanut oh, butter. I've, but I've now you at... can buy peanut butter in Europe. Yeah. But like 20 years ago, it was right. nothing like peanut butter in Europe. I've been asked for peanut butter. I've been asked for Bisquick pancake mix. I've been asked for soft batch chocolate chip cookies because they can only buy the crispy ones. Uh, <laughs> what else have they asked me to bring? Root beer. I got asked to bring root beer. Apparently okay. that's not available except for in America. And sometimes oh, wow. they fall in love with a particular candy where they don't Hershey's have Kisses. Stoppers. Yeah. Can you bring me stoppers? We couldn't get Dr. Pepper down on Taboga Island. That's where my family is, and that's right off of Panama. No, Dr. Pepper. We actually had to have some shipped down to us. <laughs> so I think I could probably go 10 years not noticing if Dr. Pepper was available at my <laughs> local grocery. Well, this was actually my daughter requesting it, not me. But yeah, I understand. <laughs> But you know, so, people, Betty, people, I'm sorry to interrupt. I came really late, got caught in the rain here in St. Louis. Tell me what I'm supposed to have in my bowl because you guys haven't started cooking yet, right? I heard sugar. Yes. <laughs> so I assume you need to start with that. So I have 15 ounces of ricotta in the bowl. Yes. Yes. <clears throat> well, uh, add two or three spoons of uh, flour, one egg, uh, and two spoons of sugar. Okay, that's it. Where's the yeah. butter? Where does the butter come in? 
uh, for, for frying. frying, you mean? Yeah, but I will use oil because last time we tried butter, it was not good. So there are some questions, I will answer them in the chat, okay? Uh, what kind of flour, as I said already, you could use any flour. In Ukraine, usually we use wheat flour because other flour, or other types of flour are too expensive in Ukraine. But here, I, I think you could add anything you like. It doesn't matter because you won't use it a lot, right? So uh, I'm using coconut flour because I'm gluten-free. So this is a dessert, you right? I think coconut flour- Can I ask you a question, Diane? Yes. Is this the right consistency? Oh, it looks great, yes. I think it could be even a little bit uh, more liquid. Like, uh, it's also okay. So yeah. what should I add? Some milk? No, no, it's okay, it's okay. I think let it be like, like that. that. And so. it goes to the pan? It's ready basically to transfer to the pan? Yes, now I will show right. you what to do next. Okay. So you, you, take said, you said something about banana as well, right? Yes. So in uh, mine... In mine, I, did, I didn't put flour in. I just used like paneer, but you know, queso fresco. And I put a banana and one egg. And I put no sugar. And the one thing that Diana, like, isn't this right here? Like, it's very wet still. No, I think it's good. I sure. It's yeah, like so mine. It's, it's, it's a lot exactly wetter like than mine. I think. It's really sticky. But then you put it in the flour. Oh, so you're going to so, make like balls out of this? Yes. So I'm showing you now. Ah, okay. so that's why we need flour to make those balls. Yes. The oh, flour is so, hot oh. and the cheese. <laughs> what, what again? The flour is not in the cheese. Now you also add uh, some flour in, in this cheese because your quarter is too liquid for that. In, uh, in other... Mine's not liquid at all. Oh, that's great. So you take some cheese in a hand, do you see it? And you roll a ball. It shouldn't be really like a ball, see? And then you roll it into flour so you could fry it. You could add uh, some flour on another pan, uh, on another dish, and put it there. Yes, Let me see. Can you add like any, like fruit to it, or like like I don't know anything else? Like for example, but uh, strawberries or something like since you said it's a dessert, right? Yes. So okay. you don't add you don't add fruits uh, inside like in the dish, but you oh. usually eat it with some fruits or okay. berries. Also, okay. we add jam. I try to eat it here with peanut uh, peanut butter. It's also tasty. I would, I would say. Oh. Uh, yes. Uh, yeah. That's all. Okay. It's like it's like a naked blintz. It's like a cheese blintz without the the wrapper. They do look like little pancakes. Yes, they are. I told you. Yeah. Yeah. So you roll it uh, into flour and put uh, on a pan. See, mine feels really sticky. Like for me, I want to like mix a lot of flour into it so it's not sticky at all. Yeah. Put the stove on medium or is it really low? But you know what I discovered? It doesn't have to be really like sticky that keeps the shape. You just plump, plump it on the pan and yes. it, it's going to fry. Yes. And the less flour, the healthier, I think. Yeah, the same. Yeah, so I didn't use any sugar at all, but like the banana and the coconut flour makes it really sweet. So did you add the banana because of the sweetness or because of the texture? To make it moist, because on mine, I was, I, I just use, you know, the cheese, it's dense. Right, okay. So, and so, yeah, I mean, this is, that cheese crumbled up and then a banana and an egg. So you don't need 
to fry it for a long time, just one or two minutes, so it will have sunny sides. But also, it shouldn't be really fried, you know. That's why I don't think it's really, it's not healthy if you don't fry it for, for long. How did Jesus, like, it was almost solid. See, I'm just, I'm just frying a piece of the cheese by itself. Look at that right there. Ooh. Yeah. <laughs> But I, I actually dipped it in the flour and it seems to, because usually when I'm frying the cheese by itself, it sticks to the pan really well. But this is the first time I dipped it in the flour first. And it seems to be not sticking so much. Also about sugar again, if you're going to eat it with jam or sweet peanut butter, you don't need to add a lot of sugar inside the dish, you know? You just drop it in the pan. I think I need more flour in mine. Mine are falling apart. Diana is truly trying to get me to eat healthy. <laughs> yeah, I was born and raised here, so I love my sugar. Yeah. Well, I mean, you could do like me. I mean, I'm gonna, I'm gonna eat it cover with jam. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> Actually, this is a, a pear chutney with a Grand Marier that I made. So it's like that sounds okay. good. Well, I was listening when she was talking about the various flowers. And of course, she's got a point. If I use my coconut flour, then I've got the sweetness. If I use the almond and then put something on top, I've got the sweetness. So she's right. I don't really need that sugar. Okay. I just like I it. Cook that one. I think you could try both to cook with sugar and without, and you will see which kind you like the most. Also, I will show you now what I have on my pen. If it's how do you flip it? Okay, here. See? Ooh, that looks yummy. Yeah, so it should be just a little bit sunny, sunny sides, that's all. See, yeah. I have the problem with them holding together. Yours holds together much better. I think you put a lot more flour. Or remember that wheat flour has gluten, which is going to develop oh, yeah, that's right. texture. And almond it. flour, um, excuse me, um, coconut flour usually absorbs more liquid than wheat flour, but it might take longer to do so. Actually, now that it's set, look at now it's become less, more. I think I just didn't let it set long enough. Now it's absorbed. Yeah, I think coconut flour generally absorbs more, but it takes longer to do it. Yeah, so I didn't wait long enough. Now it's really not sticky at all. See, look at that. Yep. Yep, I didn't uh, wait long enough. Diana, I am I'm sort of done with that uh, dough right now. So is this consistency good enough or? It looks good, yeah. Okay. Try to fry it. Okay. My first we have to make balls and fry it, right? Shallow fry it, right? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. But you make a you make a ball and then you coat it with flour and then fry it. Yeah, so this one's completely falling apart over here. Considering how early it's over there in India, I'm surprised he's getting this right. <laughs> He's Sorry. Be for breakfast. I it's could not be, think that early. It's <laughs> no. going to be perfect for an early breakfast. Early, early breakfast. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, we usually eat it as a breakfast, but I love it so much, so I could eat it during the whole day, you know. That wow. I, I intend to make it for breakfast. So when Or posted it, I kind of bookmarked it, but now that I have the right ingredients sitting in the fridge waiting for something, it's Oops. perfect. I'm doing brunch. Okay. Can't do early. <laughs> I'm not waiting. I'm eating it now. <laughs> I wish I could smell it. It looks good. So how different is your cheese mixture from what you would stuff inside a cheese blintz, a cheese pancake? Uh... You mean now when I mixed everything? Yeah. 
I would say it's not really so different because you just, uh, as I said, roll it uh, into flower afterwards when you when you form your balls. It shouldn't be really different. So, Diana, what do you think? I'm finally getting the shape right? Yeah, I pick. think you're, yeah, yeah, you're great. And now put some flour. And how hot do you do it? Do you do it very hot or slow hot or? I, I would say the medium. Yeah. You don't really have to cook it very much. You're just making it golden on both sides. Yeah. So that's like a number six or number seven on electric stove, right? Remember, I don't cook. Every electric stove is different. I hate all the stoves because everyone's different. <laughs> well, I'm going to start with a six and go from there. Uh, or I'm surprised to see that it looks like you're shallow frying in stainless steel. Is that your norm, not cast iron or, or carbon steel? Yeah, I just have yeah. this one pan. Oh, well, okay. no, I have a, I have a, like a little saucepan, but I literally only have three pans. Diana, this how one, much oil did you put in your pan? Seven layers of stainless with a core of aluminum. Okay. So, so literally, if I put this on here, the temperature on the top will be the same temperature as the bottom. So I would say it, one like, uh, small, like a Dutch oven. Yeah. One small spoon uh, of oil. Okay, just enough to cover the bottom of the pan, right? Yes. Okay, gotcha. I'm using this coconut oil. All right. My problem is, is I can never make things look good. But, you know. How can they taste I don't know. good? It, it looks well, delicious. I think your tummy worries about shape. what it looks like. Yeah. As long as it tastes good going down. Agreed. Can you repeat the temperature for frying it? We uh, we had somebody in the chat miss miss what temperature the burner. Yeah, I would say, I would say five levels, four or five levels. I mean, it's a, you're basically frying an egg. So however you fry an egg, right? Yeah. But like if for, you were just doing a whatever. What I've, what I've learned through having so many house guests is that the definition of a fried egg is so different. My German <laughs> house guests. That's true. That's true turn the flame up as high as it will go, fill the pan with butter, and really almost deep fry their egg on a high temp, and they want it brown. And to me, a fried egg is just like lightly colored. Well, my mother would cook it until it was like rubber, and that's why I learned to cook, because I, she can't cook. <laughs> and you know, mine are lightly fried versus her rubbery ball. So yeah. Everybody, everybody either likes it just the way their mother made or any way except the way their mother made. Exactly. <laughs> any way but that way. I guess well. Guys, how are you doing there? Have you already started uh, frying? I started eating already. What are you talking yeah, about? Yeah, I've been eating on one. Yeah. So, oh, really? how long do you cook it? Like a couple of minutes on each side, or yeah, three to five, or? Oh, wait, come off. Yeah, I'm, I'm yeah, really I would say till they harden. Like my well, stuff in the bowl was very soft, too soft. Now, next time I need to add yeah, more. Yeah, so this one flour. in the middle here was one of my first ones, and see how it. But now, so apart. I'm waiting now till the bottom of those pancakes will harden. I hope How do you will. like it? It's too hot to I, eat. Oh. <laughs> Did you add sugar? Mine, mine, I have the banana, but I don't really taste the banana. That's interesting. That is interesting. Oh, okay. So here's mine. Ooh, that look those they look oh. really good. Yeah, they look great, really. Very Ukrainian. 
I just fried it in like vegetable oil. Yeah. Probably more than I needed, but live and learn. And I did put sugar in mine. <laughs> How dare you? <laughs> Girl after my own heart. <laughs> American, I sugar. I, I salt, like... salt and sugar, sugar. <laughs> so American, co- what is American cooking is extra sugar, and French cooking is extra butter. Yeah, probably. Though I had Chinese couch surfers, and they, when we cooked together, they said they always put a touch of sugar every time they use salt. And I thought that was fascinating, kind of like a yin and yang and balancing sort of thing. So that was fun. They were from Hong Kong. And uh, that was fun. I've had so many fun cooking experiences with my guests. Oh, that sounds a lot of fun. And everybody's got to eat. So if you say I cook, you know, and I'm kind of a mom. So, well, that's uh, that's how I met you, right? I came to one of your potlucks in St. Louis. Yep. Oh, oh, or look. <laughs> Can you see the balloons and streamers are still up from your birthday? <laughs> <laughs> um, that was a month ago. It's about time Is it to clean that the long ago? No. <laughs> well, tomorrow's February, right? Or no, day after Almost. tomorrow. It's day a, after three tomorrow. weeks ago. Yeah. So guys, I have a task for you. I will tell you how do we call it uh, this dish in Ukraine, and you will try to repeat it. What they say? You just <laughs> want to be entertained, huh? <laughs> no, she knows that we're very good at pronunciation, Someone there? especially names. <clears throat> okay, test us. Test us. Got it. Easy. Do you hear me? Someone. You you yeah. froze for a second. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Did you listen what I said? No, we didn't hear that. You you were frozen. Oh, okay. <laughs> okay, I will repeat it. So I have a small task for you. I will tell you how do we call this dish in Ukrainian and you will try to repeat it. Repeat after me. What do you say? All right. Okay, Oliver, you have already known that, so it won't be difficult for you. Uh, so we call I we call forgot. it sir. Uh, we call it sir in Ukraine. Yeah, yeah. Okay. You know. uh, so we call it sir Nike. Sir Nik. Oh, sir Nik. <laughs> yeah, that's right. What? So well, sir is cheese. Sir is yes. Cheese. Yeah. Yeah. Brian, how it do you know cheese. this? Because there's so many languages that sh- share the same root words. What yeah, other so language this... has a ser for cheese? Um, I don't know any. I, it might have been the northern Slavic countries, maybe Slovakia and... Oh, and Slovakia, Czech. Czech. Yeah, that's yeah. possible. In Poland, is ser is cheese. Yeah. Yes. But that's all I, I would guess. And it, it might have been the southern Slavic countries too. I, I can't remember now. Yeah, I think it's the same in all Slavic languages. Like Slavic uh, in Slavic language yeah. groups. Yes, yes. Yeah. I mean, so it means actually it means some plate of cheese. Sirniki. Sounds difficult. Yeah. What what is it again? So what? Sirneke. Sirneke. That's great. Oh my Sirneke. God, you're great people. The, the difference fun. between Ukrainian sernik and Polish sernik is that we bake it in the oven. We don't fry it. Okay. Now we also could it's uh, bake, bake it like you can. Yeah, yeah. You can use this like round, uh, like for the making a, a, a like a birthday cake. Those round forms. Oh, so wow. that's how we make sernik. It's usually round, <laughs> and it's bacon. In some Baked. Ukrainian, in some Ukrainian regions that are on the border with Poland or other European countries, we also people also cook it like that. So we have yeah. different types. Just right, that's right. my favorite and. You so that's cool. That's very cool to learn that there start. are different ways of, ma- of making ceramic. I'm going to have to make this tomorrow. 
especially I had no clue what we're gonna do, you know, and now I know it's a... <laughs> <laughs> Paulo, That's awesome. what temperature oven for the Polish? Oh boy, you know, it's, first of all, it's in, in Celsius, so okay. I don't remember, Ooh. but here I would do like 400 Fahrenheit, but it's my guess really. For how long? Uh, half an hour, maybe. That's what I was like, thinking. Yeah. Okay. But it has not, nice, like, uh, you know, a hardened uh, crust on the top. Oh, and the base is made. I used to make this. I was buying, uh, what do you call it? Uh, it's like, uh, oh, gee, so what's the name? If, if you look here, see, this is a piece of that cheese that I didn't dip in flour. And look at how it's stuck. Yeah. Yeah. So in the past, that's how I tried to fry it. And, it was it has two. Let's... and so in the future, whenever I make this cheese, I'm going to definitely dip it in a little flour. I, Because I am gluten sensitive, I tend to stay away from flour. But now I have like five different types of flour, like from India, like lentil and all kinds of different bean flour and rice flour and do you have to order those or can you go to an international food store or how do you get those? Yeah, both. You can, you can order, like, you can just order like gluten-free mix and it would be a mix of different things. But I like mixing my own, so. So Cynthia, I don't know which chain is closest to you, whether you've got Trader Joe's or whether it's a Kroger or or whatever, but they're all going to have alternative flowers. They're just going to be different brands. Um, uh, was it Arrowhead Mills or Bob's Red Mill is going to have mm -hmm. some gluten-free flowers. Um, they all will have an almond flower. Some stores will have a coconut flower. Yeah, yeah so the coconut and the almond I can get. Okay. Bob's Red Mill, and yeah. in it, it has Sweet white rice flour, whole grain brown rice flour, potato starch, whole grain sweet white sorghum flour. And really the secret to like a cake is you have to have something that binds it. So it's got tapioca and xanthamum gum. Is that how you say it? The xanthamum? Yeah, xanthamum gum and tapioca are replicated. Yeah, so those are the things that bind it. So this is just like, you know, like biscuits or a cake or, you know, just all-purpose flour. But you're going to spend more for that than you will for a regular flour, much more. Yeah, I've, I've had so this true. forever. <laughs> yeah, the cup, yeah. the cup for uh, cup or for C for C flour is much more expensive than regular. Otherwise, I buy gargum and I mix that um, to thicken. Uh, Diana. Yeah. Uh, so it, does it, does it, is it okay or do, do I need to fry it more, this one? I think you need to fry more because, you know, it is not the whole bowl. Okay. It is, it is split it? Yeah, so I'll, I'll put it on more, uh, I'll fry it more, you said. Oh, you need to add some more flour. So when he is cooking that, when he takes it out, should it be soft inside? Should it be hard? What should be the, the consistency inside and out of the little cake? Yeah, anyway, it will be soft because it's cheese. It can't be hot, you know? Uh, yeah, but um, outside, uh, sides on the top and on the down, uh, and down, they will be a little bit harder. Uh, very soft. If you want to make a regular cheesecake, this is exactly the same recipe, except you need to create a bottom. And for bottom, I used to buy like a tea crackers or, or tea biscuits and crush them. Um, maybe like uh, some, I was adding some milk or moisture to make like a bottom. And then you plump all this uh, substance from the bowl and put to the oven. And it gets ready on its own. Um, 
also you could add some nuts uh, or dried yeah, uh, or raisins yeah yeah or dried apricots i love it some some dried fruit yeah yeah but then it's, how do you I eat this in ukraine normally breakfast. this one we cook tonight yeah how do you normally eat this for breakfast uh, I use I eat it with berries because I like berries. You could also have strawberries, right? Uh, blueberries. Uh, also, you could uh, people use it with sour cream, uh, or you, mm. you could uh, you could add just some yogurt. White yogurt. I don't know, as, you know, simple, simple. Uh, yeah, and some jam. So sour cream, jam, and fruits. Or berries. I think it's so easy to make. When you learn how to make it, it will take you up, I don't know, 10 or 15 minutes to cook that thing. And what city when are I, when you? I, when I first oh. made it, I didn't realize that you should dip it in the flour. Remember last time we cooked this? Yeah. And it didn't, it stuck to the pan too much. So it's like the flour creates like um, a crunchy surface to make it so it doesn't stick so well. So uh, I will show you now. See how should it look? Also inside. Okay, so you can ship me a box of them, right? Right? <laughs> ship me at least one box. <laughs> you present. It looks good. It does look delicious. This is what mine look like. I don't, they're more like pancakes. Yeah. Yeah, so you could make it smaller. Usually it's smaller. It's small. Mine are also big tonight. But, that was my I don't know. Yeah. Somehow, I think I'm an American, so I make them big. I so think I yeah. Diana's big. look bigger. She she makes them thicker before she puts them in the pan. I notice that. So Oops. she she rolls it into a ball and then she flattens the ball, but yeah, still thick. Still thicker, yeah, than than I would have done. So yeah. When I, I first made it, yeah, I was making it very thin, and then they just fall apart. Too much at the beginning. Okay. It's still falling apart a little bit without using gluten flour. So it kind of reminds me of when you break open that tube of biscuits, about that thickness. Yeah. Okay. Yep. Yeah. So what are we equating that to? About three quarters of an inch. <laughs> Is it like That's a guy uh, Three quarters of an inch. More like a half inch. Half inch. Yeah, half so, inch. There's the thickness. Yeah, half inch. Although Diana's did look pretty thick. And then I was didn't want to use very much oil, and then therefore they they stuck and fall apart. Yeah, I got to go spend a weekend with Diana. I'm getting hungry. <laughs> Yeah, welcome. <laughs> I will show you how does it look like when some good people cook it, not me. Wait, how do you share screen? Share screen. Okay. Do you see my screen? Yes. Yeah. See? yours to look like that and then we need ours to look like that right that's why i'm going to her house see people eat it with here you have sour cream some jam fruits like yeah that. is that powdered sugar on top or what is yeah, that yeah 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 i okay. think it's sugar i, I want to place an order of those please and then you said vanilla sugar sometimes yeah yeah actually i forgot yeah i don't know whether you have it here, but we add vanilla sugar. It has very good smell and taste. Can you clarify what is vanilla sugar? Right, sugar, 
made with vanilla. It's delicious. I think, I think what it is is you put a vanilla bean in a jar of sugar and the flavor just kind of permeates the jar. So Howard, it depends what country you're in. In some countries you buy little packets of vanilla sugar and it's, yes. vanilla, it's sugar that has been heavily flavored with vanilla and you use that instead of extract in your baking. In other countries, it's a, uh, a vanilla bean buried in a little tub of sugar or that's been ground up with the sugar and so it's got little brown flecks. And so it's sugar with a lot of vanilla flavor. So Amy Ooh, is showing us her tub. If, Amy, if you open up your tub, does it have is little that brown Trader flecks? Joe's thing? Does it have little brown flecks of no little brown flecks inside? Okay. So Sue, I had this same kind of cheese in um, Brazil for breakfast, <clears throat> and so this is basically just that same cheese crumbled up with eggs. Yeah, and I fried. can tell Amy. Does it have little brown flecks? So here, what I have, I finally finished my yeah. cooking and I will eat it, I think three times. It, yeah, I will have three breakfasts you now. Now nice. I was lazy when really I nice. cooked last time. When I cooked last time, I just ate them with jam for breakfast. But you like you say you warm them up again before you eat them. Yeah. I don't eat them cold. I don't think it would be tasty. But anyway, you could try. I kept thinking I will get a little butter and I'll warm them up in the frying pan. And every time I was just yeah. like, oh, this looks so good. And I just put a little jam and ate it. So it, last time we cooked, it lasted me like four breakfasts. Yeah, but this doesn't have to be just a breakfast thing. Oh. This looks like something Ooh. when you want to just snack, but snack healthy, you can do that any time of the day or night. Yeah, you could eat it as a snack, but usually it's a dessert, so any any time you could eat it. So, I like desserts. So <laughs> when it comes to having leftovers, is it better to fry them all up and reheat a fried one? Or can I save the dough and make it fresh in a day? That's a good question. So, I know, right? <laughs> yeah. Also, yeah, can I you think freeze them after you cooked them? For another time. I'm, I would love that. I would make a lot of them, but put them in individual freezer bags and then maybe take out two or three for a day or something if they're okay. Because some things you can't freeze, it tastes like rubber or something afterwards. No, I mean, so this maybe. kind of cheese you can freeze no problem. Like, we, yeah. mo mom used to make a lot of this cheese and then freeze like bags of it and take it out and it would be the same texture. Awesome. Tomato. But I would cook it first and then freeze it if you so want. So maybe what I'll do but is freeze a couple. Diana's going to get mad because you would never freeze this food and eat it later. Okay, but Lulu's got a good question. Can you fix um, the dough, freeze the dough, and then use the dough at another time? Or any combination. Maybe not freeze the dough, but put it in the fridge. Let's say I want to make this the night before, and I just want to wake up, make yeah. it for company. But, you know, I guess I could answer my own question by doing all of the above. <laughs> and, report, and reporting. Or back. you could wait and have Diana maybe answer. <laughs> so, I so, usually, yeah, we don't do that. We don't freeze dough. Uh, usually we cook it the same day because it actually doesn't take you a lot of time to mix all the uh, stuff together. I don't know, just five minutes. I think you could try, but I wouldn't put it in a freezer, but you could put it in a fridge. I think overnight it will be okay. Uh, also, I don't know, usually we cook it and uh, just put uh, this dish into a fridge and warm the next day and it's okay. And from a health perspective, you wouldn't want to whip up eggs and leave raw eggs in the fridge for long periods of time like that. So yeah, I agree with Orr. I, I can't imagine leaving a, a raw batter for more than 24 hours. Um, I mean, crepe batter, I grew up making that ahead of time. You would make it at night, put it in the fridge and cook the crepes in the morning. For the next day. Yeah. So I would advise you to cook the same day you make the dough. 
Well, I just whipped up a huge batch. <laughs> and so I'm like, oh, uh, <laughs> I ate two already. I'm full. I'm fine. I can't eat anymore. So that's the thing when you make too much, it's okay to freeze it. When you make too much, you invite your friends over. <laughs> yes. Non COVID time. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's what I was considering last time I made so much of it. And then I was like, maybe I should save it. Instead, I've ended up spending an extra 10 minutes and cooking it all and then saving it. And I was going to do that. I was going to freeze some of it, but I ended up eating it in like, like two days, like every meal. <laughs> so, or how did you reheat them? I didn't. I actually just cold? like, I had, a, I had one, like one or two for every meal as dessert with like some jam on it. Ah, there you go. But you just. <laughs> but I should have heated it because it's so much better heated. Yeah. But I was just. Guys, like, don't do that. Every time I took it out of the fridge, I looked at it and I couldn't wait, and I just ate it. And then I was just like, I should have heated that every time. So okay, I, you I know, don't do that. Question. Serving as a serving as a cake, you eat it cold. That is delicious. <laughs> so. It's okay, that sounds, that sounds good, but my question about reheating, because it's just me most of the time. I don't want to go in and dirty up another skillet just for two or three. Has anybody ever microwaved it for 20 seconds to see how, you know, just to heat it? Yeah, Is it yeah. still okay? No? Yeah, yeah. Yes, you could do that. Not that I'm lazy, but, you know, yeah, microwave. Okay. okay, that's totally okay. But yeah, the shorter time, the better, though. Yeah, that's what I was saying. Maybe 15, 20 seconds should be more than enough. Yeah. All right. Um, anybody have some last minute questions here? Yeah, all right. Anybody do a, a thank you for Diana for bringing Ukraine to the world. <laughs> And now right, everybody's going to want to make this for breakfast. Hey, we, we have a question coming from yes. India. Yeah, so mm -hmm. I'm finding it hard to maintain the shape while frying. So does that mean I have put in less flour next time I need to put in more flour or what? Uh, could you repeat it again? I am having a hard time maintaining the shape uh, while oh, frying. Yes. Okay. So uh, what can be done better next time? Like I need to put in more flour. Yes, from that, what I have seen, I think it was too liquid. That, well, that's why it fall, fall apart. So I would add more flour. Got it. Thank you. But it's tasting very really good. It. Thank you, Diana, for it is yummy. It is yummy. The perfect breakfast for us at 6 o'clock in the morning. <laughs> Fine. It's, a, it's, a <laughs> it's 7 p.m. here and 6 a.m. in India. <laughs> um, bon I knew I found when I made it, that I was putting too much flour and it was falling apart when I cooked it last time. And so the, you, you want the ball itself to be pretty, like almost sticky when you roll it and then pat it and then you put the flour on the outside and only flip it one time, cook it on one side and then the other side. What I was doing is I was flipping it too much and it fell apart and also put too much flour. And then I'm not using gluten flour, so both all that makes it so they fall apart more. Got it, got it. I am also, I think, flipping it very much, very, very frequently. That's a good point. Do you fry paneer? Yeah. Do you fry, fry it with, do you dip it in flour first or you just fry it? No, I dipped it in flour. Yeah, when I, I always just tried to fry it and it always didn't work. So this is the first time I've ever dipped it in flour and then fried it, it's so much better. So I actually just did plain paneer and then also with banana and egg and a little bit of coconut flour. So. Got it, thank you. Oh, Laura from Chile guys, is here let too. Me know. Hello, Laura. So guys, let me know no. if you will cook it next time. I don't know, you could send me pictures. I'm really interested if you will get it, you know. Yeah, that was awesome. I'll, I'm going to try to cook it tomorrow. 